In our opinion, Mr. Baldwin chose to play Russian roulette when he fired a gun without checking it and without having the armorer do so in his presence. Hello and welcome to True Crime Rocket Science, the most authentic voice in true crime. The bang didn't sound like a blank. Those are the words from Joel Souza, Russ Director. The 22-page incident report, and this episode is really part one dealing with that incident report. Uh, it is authored by around half a dozen officers detailing their observations when they arrived at the scene, the church, following Mamie Mitchell's 911 call at 1346 on the 21st of October. What's useful about this report is that it names all the individuals in the church, in other words, identifies and lists all the relevant witnesses. It also provides contextual clarities, such as the distance from the set gate to the church, which was 1.3 miles, and valuable dynamics such as Serge's demeanor. There's also a strange moment where when supervising officer when the supervising officer was securing the scene, quote, a male approached him, end quote, wanting to say something to him. That male turned out to be Alec Baldwin. Before we get to the rest of this episode, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, please do like, share, leave a comment. And let's get started. So we're going to start off with the incident report of Jay Lujan. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing it right, but there it is. And this first report we're looking at involves an officer who took Joel Sousa's statement even prior to the projectile being removed from his shoulder. That's quite incredible, isn't it? And so let's go to his statement. He says... On Thursday, October 21st, 2021, at approximately 1.52 p.m., Santa Fe County Sheriff personnel were dispatched to a shooting incident at 545 Bonanza Creek Road. At around 2.15 p.m., so around about um, 22 minutes later, I think they were on scene, Santa Fe County Sheriff's Lieutenant uh, Benavides, again, I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that right, I'm sure you will correct me if I'm not, advised one of the persons shot was were being transported by ambulance to St. Vincent's Hospital in Santa Fe. Lieutenant Benavides further requested a deputy to respond to St. Vincent's in regards to the shot subject. I responded to the location. And so the impression I get is that the this officer Jay Lujan, I'm not sure whether he actually even arrived at the Bonanza Creek Ranch. The fact is that he went to the hospital very early on. Anyway, he goes on to say, upon arrival, Santa Fe County Fire Paramedic Unit Six One soon arrived and checked the conscious male subject into the hospital. The male subject was later identified as Joel Souza. Medical doctors and nurses tended to Joel. I made contact with ER Dr. Anderson and ER nurse C. Ziller. They informed me Joel was in a stable condition and were in the process of conducting more tests and procedures such as a CT scan. I again made contact with Dr. Anderson who stated the possible projectile did not appear to do any severe damage such as to blood vessels or broken bones. I was also informed of the fact that doctors were going to remove the item from Joel's shoulder. And I think what he means to say is that they were about to do that. Uh, as I say, from that statement, it's not 100% clear whether Officer Lujan was on the scene briefly and then left for St. Vincent Hospital in Santa Fe or whether he went straight there. If Lujan was on the scene, he likely wasn't on the scene for more than 10 to 15 minutes. In any event, his narrative includes virtually nothing of value in terms of personal observations regarding the aftermath to the set and crew, besides noting the timestamp for when the director was transported by ambulance. We know this occurred relatively quickly after the incident, within 20 to 30 minutes. In the hospital, likely before 3 p.m., Officer Lujan encountered the Rust director, 
To his credit, the wounded director said he wished to make a statement before receiving meds. And so let's go back to the report. Lujan writes, I briefly made contact with Joel who was sitting upright in a trauma room bed. I noticed an approximate half inch hole on Joel's right shoulder. I asked Joel if he was able to make a statement. Joel stated he did wish to speak with me before he was administered any medications prior to doctors taking the projectile out. It was learned Joel is a writer and a director of a movie which is being filmed at the location. Joel explained the movie being produced was a western which included Old West six-shooter type firearms. Joel went on to say they were in the process of filming a gunfight a gunfight scene near the church location of the movie set. I asked Joel what happened. Joel explained he remembered a movie worker or armorer handling guns prior to begging to film the gunfight scene. And that is verbatim what is written. Something about the armorer begging to film the gunfight scene. Joel explained he thought he heard someone say the gun was cold, which meant unloaded, but was not sure. Joel went on to say he remembered hearing a loud bang, which didn't sound like a blank round. And so Joel would have, it seems like he immediately knew that something real had taken place, something, um, a, a real round had been discharged. Joel stated that he fell backwards, looked forward, and saw one of the other members of the production crew bleeding. I asked Joel if he knew where the guns used where the guns used in the movie were obtained from. He stated that the armorers deal with, with the, uh, that aspect of the production and didn't know where the guns came from. The answer to that would actually be Seth Kenny from PDQ Prop and Arm. What stands out in this segment? What does the director mean with, about that the armorer was begging for the fight scene to be filmed? I, I think that is actually a typo. I think it's actually beginning. So if you read it through again... An armorer handling guns prior to beginning to film the gunfight scene. Does that make sense? And I actually got this um, insight from someone on Patreon who made the suggestion. It does make sense. Curiously, the director can't remember who said cold gun. It's curious because he was standing right there and he's the director. It's also noteworthy that even in his distressed condition, Joel seemed to notice more than Baldwin did. For example, he knew Helena was bleeding. Baldwin says nothing about that. He says nothing about Helena bleeding in his ABC interview. It's also significant that merely from the sound of the bang, Joel assumed correctly what had happened. Just based on the loudness of the bang, just that alone, Joel thought it didn't sound like a blank round. And so Joel immediately assumed that a live round was used. And that, once again, contradicts what... Alec Baldwin seemed to be suggesting that no one in their wildest dreams could have imagined that it was a live round. It turns out that Joel seemed to think that very, very early on. Um, then the statement kind of concludes, at 4, 4.25 p.m., doctors and medical staff began to administer pain medications and started to remove the projectile from Joel's shoulder. As staff turned Joel over, I noticed a lump beneath the skin on Joel's upper right shoulder blade. After about five minutes, medical staff removed a grey in colour item, which appeared to be a projectile. The item was placed into a plastic container and sealed with tape. Dr. Anderson then removed the sealed tape in order to take a photo of the item. Dr. Anderson then resealed the lid with another label. There also seems to be a slight typo here where he says, the items, I kept the item. I think it should just be, I kept the item in my possession until SFSO, I think that Santa Fe Sheriff's Officer Crime Scene Investigators arrived and took possession. I had no further involvement in this matter. So I'm not going to take it further than that. I will be doing a follow-up episode dealing with the almost half a dozen other officers who were on scene, what they saw and what they experienced. It really is quite interesting. For those interested in the Vincent van Gogh case, I did do a live earlier this evening. I'll be doing it every Wednesday at about the same time, 4 or 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 
you will need to be a member to participate in it. Uh, the first show seemed to be quite interesting based on a lot of the comments. So if you're interested in that, uh, join, become a member. I'll put a link in the description if you would like to be part of that discussion. Then just join, join the channel. Also, if you're enjoying the content here, you can join Patreon for as little as $1 a month. And uh, I'll also put a link to that. It's www.patreon.com slash TCRS. Thank you for listening and I'll see you guys next time.